It's 4.30 on WKYT This Morning. Donald Trump is officially the Republican nominee for president. We'll have more from the campaign trail just ahead this morning. A grand jury's indicted a Powell County woman for murder while she's claiming she shot in self-defense. Also this morning, we've talked with the Lexington police chief about his reaction to the Dallas attack. What he had to say ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Hello there. Good morning. Welcome in on your Wednesday. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. Let's check out what's happening with the weather on this hump day with Micah. There's not much going on early this morning. That's always good news as you're walking out the door. It is still a little bit humid, but it is July. What do you expect? And there are some storms just to the north of us slowly creeping our direction. But don't expect much out of those. I don't expect those to actually creep into the area. Could you get a sprinkle out of it? Here in the next few hours, it's possible back toward the west, but for the most part, we stay dry today. We get in towards your afternoon, just a steamy one in store, right around 90 degrees. We'll hold on to that 90 degree reading all the way through the rest of the work week, off into your weekend, and some days even higher than that. So we're going to be talking about that and focusing in on that because thunderstorms, they're virtually zero as we head throughout the rest of the work week. We'll get into that coming up. All right. The heat is the main thing. Thank you, Micah. Well, it's now official. Donald Trump is the Republican nominee for president. He received the votes he needed during a roll call of states at the Republican National Convention yesterday. And Governor Matt Bevin of Kentucky spoke on behalf of the Commonwealth's delegation up there. From a state where our citizens still respect God and the Constitution and our military and our police officers, it is our honor to cast our vote seven for Governor Kasich, seven for Senator Rubio, 15 for Senator Cruz, and 17 for the next President of the United States of America, Mr. Donald J. Trump. And now Craig Boswell has the latest on the campaign trail. Congratulations, Dad. We love you. Donald Trump Jr. made it official during the Republican convention roll call, casting New York's delegates to make his father the party's nominee for president. I formally declare Donald J. Trump and Michael R. Pence the Republican nominees for president and vice president of these United States. Donald Trump thanked the delegates via satellite. Together we've achieved historic results with the largest vote total in the history of the Republican Party. Later, Donald Jr. spoke about his father's determination. For my father, impossible is just the starting point. That's how he approaches business projects. That's how he approaches life. Daughter Tiffany Trump called her father a great encourager. He draws out the talent and drive in people so that they can achieve their full potential. That's a great quality to have in a father, and better yet, in the President of the United States. Along with family and party, tonight's speakers included former Trump rivals Ben Carson and New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. It is time to come together and make sure that Donald Trump is the next President of the United States. I am proud to be part of this team. Now let's go out and win this thing together. Indiana Governor Mike Pence will formally accept the nomination Wednesday night, with Trump accepting his on Thursday. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Cleveland. And Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky also gave a speech at the convention last night attacking Hillary Clinton. A couple of years ago, Bill and Hillary camped out in my state telling anyone who'd listen why they ought to vote against me. Tonight, I'm here to return the favor. Earlier yesterday, McConnell said he had no doubt that Donald Trump would be a conservative president. Three months after police say a Powell County woman shot her ex-boyfriend to death, a grand jury indicted her for murder. State police say they arrested 33-year-old Melissa Roberts yesterday afternoon, but she claims the shooting was in self-defense. Roberts talked to our Monique Blair from jail. I just shot him and he's laying in the floor. I just... Melissa Roberts made that 911 call moments after she shot her estranged boyfriend, Stephen Strange, on April 20th. Roberts says she and Strange had an unstable relationship, and she says he often abused her. I didn't tell him no, I didn't defy him because I knew what would happen if I did. What would happen? I would get hurt. 
The shooting happened here at this home on Cow Creek Road, and after the shooting happened in April, Powell County Sheriff's deputies told us they had responded to this home on numerous occasions. At the time of the shooting, court records show Roberts had an emergency protective order against Strange. Roberts says the day before and then the day of the shooting, she was being harassed by Strange. She says she made several calls to police, but before they could respond, Roberts says Strange came into her home, and that's when she shot him. I didn't make it. I didn't want him to die. I just wanted him to stop. Tuesday afternoon, Roberts was arrested and charged with murder. State police have not yet publicly released a cause for the charge. The way it was explained to us is that there was not, like, he had not done any physical violence to her whatsoever. Stephen Strange's sister says she does not harbor hateful feelings towards Melissa Roberts, but she says she does want to see justice served. I know that they had a very, like, difficult relationship and everything, but, I mean, I knew Stephen loved her very much, and as far as I know, she loved him, too. In Powell County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Melissa Roberts' first court appearance is today at 10. A man is in the hospital this morning after a lawnmower accident in Madison County. It happened about 7.30 last night on Old Highway 25 near Silver Creek Elementary School in Berea. State police say a man was mowing a yard when the riding lawnmower flipped into a pond and landed on top of him. Police say the man was rescued and taken to the hospital. We do not know the extent of his injuries at this time. Well, the ambush of police officers in Dallas and Baton Rouge following the deaths of two African-American men by police has shocked the country. Well, we wanted to know how the man in charge of 600 police officers in Lexington sees the current climate out there. Our talk comes before the uh, this past weekend's shootings of police in Baton Rouge. Is that a cop, Dave? And people were calling, people were texting, asking if we were watching it. Lexington's chief of police watched like the rest of America. His biggest fear as a police chief came true in Dallas. There's gunfire, police rush towards the danger, and they're ambushed. That person took advantage and knew what they would do. They would respond to protect others, and, and they held that against them and then assassinated those officers and murdered them. Chief Bard says he quickly talked to his command staff and made sure the word filtered down during roll call to all his officers that the Lexington community supported them. I had great and tremendous response from all sorts of faith-based leaders, other people, other organizations that said they stood by the Lexington Police Department. The Dallas shooting of police officers came days after two highly publicized incidents of white officers shooting and killing black men. Do you feel like members of the African American community right now are fearful as a whole of a police officer in Lexington, Kentucky? I think across the nation, I think a lot of people are fearful. I think the African American community, on our website right now, we've talked with the NAACP, we're going out to churches, we're saying how to interact with a police officer. We're ahead of the curve in Lexington. We want to stay ahead of the curve, but that comes with communication and talking to people about what they think we need. He says they monitor and review cases of possible police abuse in other cities. And he says he's absolutely satisfied with the use of force by Lexington police. But there's always room for improvement. We have a program in place that looks at our use of force. Uh, we have a new committee that meets quarterly that looks at all use of force issues. And we have a reporting system in place to make sure that if someone's using too much force or if it looks like they're using it too often, that we can address that issue. We talked for an hour near the Fayette County Peace Officers Memorial. We know our profession needs changing and adjusting. We're a reflection of society, and the best way for people uh, to communicate is to understand. He says he has tough conversations with leaders of the African American community, leaders of all faiths, including so Muslims, listens to their concerns, and has tried to recruit and hire more minority officers and diverse candidates. But he believes the police are only a part of the solution. I think that's our message, is that these courageous conversations about really where we are in the United States now, whether it's racial divide, whether it's an understanding of what people are saying, you don't always have to agree, but maybe come to some understanding and respect that opinion. Those communications have to be open, and we try to do that. And Chief Barnard says community policing is crucial. He's told his officers to slow down, get out, speak to people, and know the people in your neighborhood.
Police have made an arrest in the shooting death of a Kansas police officer. Police say Kansas City, Kansas Police Captain Robert Melton was shot while in his patrol car yesterday afternoon. They say he was looking for suspects from a shots fired complaint at the time. Police say he was shot when he pulled up to a person who matched a suspect's description. Investigators say the suspected shooter was later taken into custody. New this morning, Hazard Police are asking for help in an ongoing theft investigation. They say the woman seen in this surveillance picture is a person of interest in the case. And police want to talk to her. They say it's part of their investigation into the use of stolen debit and credit card numbers. In the past weeks, there have been several acts of kindness toward law enforcement across the bluegrass. Today, Domino's Pizza will be providing lunch for all 548 Kentucky State Police employees in the Frankfurt area to show their thanks to the officers. Pizzas will be delivered to the KSP Central Lab every 30 minutes throughout the afternoon. For second and third shift workers, pizzas will be delivered. Delivered to post 12. Good deed. It's good to have you with us on WKYT this morning. We're just getting started. Our time is 441. Moms Every Day has a yummy and healthy snack idea that your kids sure to enjoy when we come back on WKYT this morning. Your seven day forecast is full of 90 degree temperatures. It's going to be hot and humid and mainly dry too. So we're going to talk all about that coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. You know, it's not really pitch black dark outside. What we're having is a full moon tonight, and it's a beautiful start to the day as you're walking out the door. It's really like a little twilight outside because of that full moon and virtually no clouds there in the sky. If you look at the very top of your screen, you can actually see that kind of peeking in. This is as high as I can go with that sky cam. But yeah, you know, give it another 30 minutes or so, you'll be able to see that. But it's a good looking start once you walk out the door. It is a bit humid, I'll tell you that. And look at the storms firing back toward Indianapolis, Indiana. It's rushing, not rushing, but it's slowly moving toward us. But it's just not going to make its way to us. I will tell you this could we see a sprinkle in the far west and northwestern zones? There is a possibility in about three hours, four hours. But for the most part, we're going to stay dry today. Temperatures are there in the 70s, even a 75 degree reading in Frankfurt right now, Covington. Look at Lexington coming in at 77 degrees. It is uh, pretty humid. We'll say that at the least. 73 now in the London Corbin area. And as we drive off into your afternoon, check it out. Absolutely nothing going on. Any day this week, I cannot rule out a pop up shower, a pop up thunderstorm. And when I say A, a singular. I, I can't rule one out popping up, and that's about it. So for the most part, we're going to stay dry. And it's all about the heat, 90 degrees there in the forecast as we travel off towards your afternoon. This is not the only 90 degrees. We have it each and every single day, at least around that. In the forecast off towards your evening, I don't see any problems whatsoever. And the breakdown of that is this steamy pattern just kind of settling on in the next several days. Notice I said several. It'll take you off into next week, but it's mainly dry during the work week. And also as we head towards your weekend, few storms here and there. It's definitely no washout by any means, but there is a possibility of a rumble of thunder or two. Still very hot and humid during the weekend too. Check out your seven day forecast. You got a 20% chance to about 30% chance now through Friday. And then we hit Saturday and Sunday, only about a 40% chance of rain. Most stay dry for the weekend too, as we'll look for the upper 80s, lower 90s all the way into next week. None of these days look like good chances of rain. And when you take the chances of rain out of here in July, you allow those temperatures to heat up very rapidly. We'll be there right around that 90 degree reading, guys. It's going to be a pretty hot and steamy yeah. work week and weekend, but I will tell you this, it's not scorching hot. It's not 95, 96 degrees. We've had that before here in July. And it's uh, it's not going to be close to that, but you're still talking about 90 degrees. I mean, yesterday, it's around still three sticky. In the afternoon, Very and, sticky. Well, the humidity nice. is the thing, and the that combination. That's when those uh, those heat indices may top the go. triple digits. So you're we right. will see. Thank you, Micah. Like it. it is 4:47. The kids are more likely to eat their vegetables if you make it fun. Here's an idea to spice things up in today's Mom's Everyday Minute. Today we are talking about snacks on the go. Whether you're a child or an adult, sometimes you need something throughout the day to nibble on. And I'm joined by one of our Moms Everyday bloggers. This is Allison Fickle, and she has This Homemade Life. We love your blog. Yes. Thank you. And you have a new book, too. Yes, this mm -hmm. is a book that I photographed. Um, it's called The 
best kids' homemade snacks on the planet. This is kind of a homemade um, veggie dipping jar. It is. Okay. What I have is just a variety of some colorful vegetables here, some carrots, um, cucumbers, kind of cut in matchsticks, um, yellow peppers, and uh, snap peas. And then um, our homemade ranch. And then you just need some small containers that have lids. Um, this is uh, a whole milk Greek yogurt and a little bit of mayo with um, garlic powder, onion powder, some salt, and dill. What you want to do is just take a couple scoops, enough to kind of cover the bottom. This is a little bit of what holds the vegetables in place. Then, really, from this point, it's up to you. You, you set the veggies up on end, however many carrots, peppers, you know, whatever your choice might be. Um, the only thing is that you kind of need to cut them so that your they lid, fit in there. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that your lid will fit. And you just stack them in there until you have a nice full jar, and then um, put the lid on, and you're ready to go. Good to go. Okay, yeah. I have to give one a try. For these tips and more, go to WKYT.com. Click on Moms Every Day. 448, our time this morning. Good to have you along. Wednesday morning on WKYT. We have a lot more coming up for you. Today, Pokeballs <laughs> will take over Commonwealth Stadium. More on an event they're hosting when we come back. Welcome back in Wednesday morning here on WKYT this morning at 451. You'd normally find footballs at Commonwealth Stadium, right? It's football stadium. But today, Pokemon balls, or Pokeballs, I guess they're called, are going to be taking over over there. <laughs> they say our Pokemon balls. <laughs> what? Yes. Our po <laughs> Pokeballs. Pokeballs. For, for okay. a couple of hours, UK will open up the stadium for Pokemon Go players to come in and find as many Pokemon as they can. Garrett Weimer has more. No football games yet, but there's still a lot going on on the football field. You just have to know where to look and how to find them. For those familiar with the game, we can uh, drop some incense in here and lure some Pokemon to the facility. UK Associate AD Nathan Schwaki says he started playing the game with his seven-year-old. I might use it as, a, as an excuse a little bit to play it myself, but... He says other places have opened up their stadiums for Pokemon hunting, so now UK is inviting folks to play on the field at Commonwealth Stadium. It's an opportunity to get out and see some member, other members of the Big Blue Nation and just have a little fun and uh, get a unique view of the stadium and enjoy the summer. Anyone who plays the game knows it's not just about catching them. Right outside the stadium, there's even a gym for folks who want to battle. We were actually up for business, but we decided to stop by since we were so close. Danielle Ward and her husband stopped outside the stadium to see what they could catch. She says they hope to come back when the stadium's open. They're from Florida and haven't been there before. Our kids have never been in either, and I'm sure it's something they'd be excited to do. So I think it'd be something nice for the family to get out and do. After all, gotta catch them all. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Fun stuff. The stadium will be open from 4.30 to 6.30 this afternoon. All you have to do is uh, park in the red lot and go in gate 9, and so it uh, should be fun for those folks. Yeah. Kind of wild over there this afternoon. Our time is 4.53. Coming up next, to look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. We'll also have another look at your forecast. Good morning, and we're so glad you're with us on WKYT. It's right now hitting 457 on your Wednesday. It's time to take a look right now at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. A lot going on. Our news team busy today. A woman accused of shooting her ex-boyfriend to death will appear before a Powell County judge. She claims she shot in self-defense. Our Mark Barber will have the details of the case coming up in our next half hour. All right, let's get a look at weather right now. Yeah, and it looks pretty good outside early this morning. There's really not much going on. Full moon out here, and it is bright in the sky. 71 degrees right now in Lexington, 73 in London. Pretty nice start to the day. It's a little bit humid, but it is July. We get into your afternoon. Be right around 90 degrees. And notice there's not, it's not 100% dry. I do have a 20% chance of rain in the forecast. But when I do 20%, I don't even show the rain chances there in the icons just because it's mainly going to be dry. Most of us won't even see some rain today. The next few days is mainly dry. And the heat is the problem. I'm going to have that coming up. Another two hours of WKYT News.